This is Securing Your Digital Life, and it's with Josh Drummond. He's the campus's Chief Information Security Officer. Uh, we'll have about five minutes of QA, I'll let him know. And QA goes over time. Uh, it'll have to be conducted outside of the end of the All right, thanks. I'm going to try using the mic. So thank you all for coming, and thank you for the replay viewers. I will watch this forever. Um, my name is Josh Roman. Um, I wanted to give a, a this topic's pretty broad, obviously, um, but I wanted to touch on some things that I think are useful to secure your digital life, which more and more our life has become digital, um, and focus on uh, practical services we have on campus that can help you achieve that, and then also direct you for more information um, to the, the red, uh, the kind of salmon booths in, in the, the corner of the exhibition room where we have uh, most of the security team there to help you out with so first of all, why? Um, to me, that's obvious. It's to protect your data from being accessed or deleted. Um, with some of these services, as we roll them out, that's not as obvious, because a lot of feedback I get is, I don't have access to anything important. I don't deal with people's credit cards or social security numbers. Why do I need to use that duo thing, for example? Um, so then I direct you to the other two bullets. Um, <laughs> if you don't care about yourself, um, <laughs> care about, uh, I, I consider um, the authenticity of the communication coming from you. So your coworkers, your family members, your friends. If someone broke into your account, maybe your data's not that important, but if they're sending messages, you know, if you're here for the, the phishing talk right before this, um, it's a lot easier to fall for a phishing when it legitimately is coming from you. Um, so you want to be able to protect the authenticity of communication coming from you. And then lastly, the, the ecosystem. So that's something that the security team um, spends a lot of time on, is keeping the PCI ecosystem as secure as possible. But attackers may not care about your data, but they'll use your account to get into the trusted border environment, the, the trusted ecosystem of UCI, and use that account to target other areas on campus to steal data and compromise accounts. So it is that domino effect of once you kind of let them in that front door of your house, they've got full range of all the things. So whether it's you know protecting it for, for your own safety or the, the safety of, of everyone else in the ecosystem, um, I think it's pretty important. So the first area I want to focus on is online. Um, most of our digital life now is online on the web. And um, it's kind of scary to think about, but oftentimes with those online services, the only form of protection you have is that one little password. <laughs> that, that, that password is to log into your account. And um, so uh, I'm not going to go through this URL. We're going to be sending a Zot mail out because October is National Cyber uh, Security Awareness Month. Um, but the, that's a URL where we talked about um, eight ways you can level up your password for, for those of you that are video game folks um, um, to, to different levels of complexity. Um, so I'm not going to go through the, the why there, but I want to go through in this presentation uh, how to do that with some of the services and tools we offer. Um, the first, I want to say, six or so. Um, can be helped by just using a secure password manager. Um, we are going to be sending out a communication to all employees about this in the next week or so, but you are some of the first to know about this. Is we'll be, we're offering um, LastPass Enterprise to the campus uh, to use to, use, uh, to secure the passwords. Now that, um, just the, the, the quick uh, description of that is that it's a tool that you can install on your mobile phone or your, as a browser uh, plugin, where it securely um, stores all the passwords you have to um, the different sites. Because um, I think you know, there's your UCI password, but there's, you know, even at UCI, probably many different passwords, and then your life and other different passwords. Um, the benefit there is it's stored very securely, and it uses the highest level of encryption, uses multi-factor authentication to access it, and all you have to do is remember that one, what they call master password, and that unlocks access to uh, all the other passwords you have stored. 
So diving into that a little bit, um, I wanted to go through the first six levels um, really quickly. So um, some of these probably seem obvious, but don't share your password. Um, the password, the point of a password is to verify you are who you say you are. If you allow other people to do that, it doesn't become <laughs> as secure. What LastPass does, um, so LastPass can't stop you from sharing your password. It's not going to come out and attack you or anything. Um, but what it does do is when you store the passwords in the tool, um, when you go to a, a known website you saved a password for, it will prompt to autofill that. So for example, if you go to login.bci.edu and you sort it, it'll prompt to autofill. Um, phishing or sharing accidentally, let's say, if you go to a website that reports to be a UCI website and it looks just like it, but it's a different URL, it helps that it won't autofill that because it knows that's not, that's not the, the right site. So even though you visually may think it's valid, um, there is some protection there that LastPass would uh, give you a hint towards that's not really the site you want to be at. The other one is don't save unencrypted. So that's a fairly common thing. People have that little passwords.txt or Excel file on their desktop that they store their passwords in. Um, obviously, that's not a good thing to do. Um, malware or other people can, can get access to that. So LastPass helps um, combat that by it stores everything in a very uh, strong <coughs> format. Third one is um, the size matters a lot for a password. So you know, there's every website you go to has different complexity rules, right? You've got to have an uppercase, a lowercase, you know, six digits, ten digits, stand on your head, you know, all, all these different rules. Um, the one that matters the most, though, and you can't change what all the complexity rules are, but is the length. Um, the math and the research has shown that yeah, it's good to have different, you know. Uh, special character, upper or lower case. The thing that matters the most is make it as long as possible. In fact, it's better to make a really long password with dictionary words than a really short one with random characters. Um, and so, um, so that is the most important thing. And, and what we try to tell people is think of it less as a password and more like a passphrase or a pass sentence. A password kind of triggers you into thinking, oh, I should pick a word, but don't, don't pick a word. So think of it as a passphrase or a pass sentence. How LastPass helps there is um, because, so the, the reason why you may not want to use a, a bunch of long passwords is because it's hard to remember. We've got a lot of things to remember, and uh, you know, passwords is one of them. So LastPass helps by allowing you to store those really long passwords in the safe pull them out when you need them, not, and you don't have to remember them. You do have to remember one, though, and it is that master password to get into LastPass. Um, so you want to make sure that's a, a very long and memorable password. The key there is to make passwords easy for you to remember and hard for computers to crack, not the other way around. Not hard for you to remember and easy for computers to crack. So length matters, size matters there. Um, similar to that is don't reuse. And that's probably the biggest use of LastPass is, again, we have hundreds of websites and accounts that um, all of us use. Best practice is to not reuse your password. Each site account should have a unique password. Um, the reason for that, if you want to visit our booth out there, there's a, there's a monitor with a bunch of green text, um, and that's the recent um, well, that breach happened last year, chad.com, for those of you that are on the academic side of the house, very popular website for students, um, help with your homework. Uh, um, the problem is when those sites get breached, the, the passwords get dumped either publicly, which they finally got publicly dumped um, uh, just recently, a few weeks ago, um, or they're on the black market, sold on the black, the dark web. Um, so either way, um, in a lot of cases, the username is your email address. So, you know, if, if a hacker gets a password dump and it has the username that has somebody's UCI email address and the password, it's not hard to guess where else that password may be used. They'll go to UCI.edu and start trying to log in again. So you want to not reuse passwords so you minimize the, the blast radius or the impact of one system being, so, not, so one breach doesn't breach the rest of your account. 
So conceptually, that, that makes a lot of sense. But again, really hard to remember a bunch of different passwords, unique passwords for each service. Again, use LastPass for that. Remember one password, you can easily set a unique, random, long password for all the other services. And then the last two, close back doors and break the chain. So um, once you have a secure password, you have to think about how else you can get around that. So closed back doors is, you know, often sites will have that secret question and answer. You know, so if you forget your password, well, you know, what's your mother's maiden name? You know, what high school did you go to? What was your mascot? Um, the key there is never use the real, <laughs> don't be honest. <laughs> um, ne never use, because A, you guess, B, it's probably on the web somewhere. Um, so what I do is treat those just like extra passwords. So random characters. And you can store those also in LastPass. So your username and password, then LastPass has this notes field where you can cut all of those other secret questions and answers you have. So treat those just like just as secure as a password, because that at that point is still a good um, Then lastly, break the chain. So account recovery passwords, usually it will send you a secondary email account. So you want to make sure that secondary account is just secure as a the seventh thing is to change your passwords periodically. So that's changed over time. Um, since this is research has shown that if you force users to change passwords too often, it's actually counterproductive. So research uses the example like every 30 days. So guess what? If you're what do you do if you're forced to change your password every 30 days? It's the same. You just count. Put the number up. Yeah. So it's the same base password, and then you just add a number or the, the, the monthly figure at the end of this. So. Hackers know that as well. They're not um, so that's that. <laughs> but um, that being said, there's there's probably some sweet spot between having to change it every 30 days and never. Um, obviously, it would be um, best to only have to change your password when you know it's been compromised. Um, the problem is we don't always the detection capabilities aren't always good enough to always know right when you've been compromised. Um, most um, most breaches out there are, are unknown for, for months, if not you know, up to a year um, before the third notice is reported. Um, and we definitely deal with that on campus. We're working to invest in improving those detection capabilities. But we um, created a tool here on my account activity so that um, periodically I would encourage you to log into this. And what it does is it shows you all the um, central places you can use your credentials successfully on campus. So it has your IP address, kind of what you're trying to get to. Was it a web login? Was it an email login? Was it a VPN login? So you can see all your activity there. And it does its best to do a geo um, IP um, determ determination of where that IP is. But the caveat is it's not perfect, right? So ISPs don't always provide the latest data. But it, it, you know, it'll let you know, you know, did you log in from somewhere on campus, or was it from China, or Russia, or you know, Texas? So you can kind of get a feel like, oh wait, that looks suspicious. I, I wasn't in Texas. I wasn't in North Korea. Um, I should probably change my password. But um, you know, let us know because there, there are obviously sometimes some vulnerabilities there, especially if you remote you know, from the locations. And um, so if you do, then that definitely is a, a time to change your password. And um, some things we are working on the security team also is more automated um, analysis of login. So, you know, if we see a login from you know California and New York within 20 minutes, well, it's geographically infeasible that that can happen. Again, with the caveat of well, you could be in one place remoting into a computer and popping around. But we're working on improving some of those capabilities. But nothing beats no no the security team. Nothing beats knowing what your activity is besides you. you know, no computer can replace that. And lastly, on passwords. So, um, is anyone not using Duo yet? <laughs> Most people are. I think there's a couple more schools left. Um, but multi-factor authentication, and this is important because um, it takes it takes the importance of that single password and just makes it less important. You know, it's, it's less critical. Um, your, your life isn't dependent on you know one string of characters. So for those of you who don't know yet, multi-factor authentication combines a, a password, something you know, with something you physically have, which is the mobile app or hardware token. 
So we are rolling it, that out at East, on ECI. We're targeting um, mid-October um, for that to go live. And in the future, next year, we're looking at requirement for the EDN and as well. Um, a couple of links on the bottom. So the size of UCI accounts, if you have other accounts in your digital life, these are two URLs that uh, tell you what, what websites out there uh, use multi-factor authentication and some guys on how to set that up for non UCI accounts. Um, so I also want to touch on encryption. So secure Wi-Fi. So the password is that initial login to the website. But after you initially log in, the, the, the browser has that cookie to, to manage your session. And keeping that, that cookie or that session secure is just as important as that initial login. Um, I won't go into too much um, due to time, but a, a few years ago there was a, a, a piece of software called FireSheet uh, that allowed people to sniff the network and to pull those tokens. And it, it, it was really good in that it opened people's eyes of like, look, I'm in Starbucks, I'm on Facebook, and the person next to me is somehow logged into my Facebook as well. Um, that prompted this HTTPS Everywhere plugin. So a lot of websites, what they do is that initial login was over HTTPS, but then it would revert to non-encrypted for the rest of the session. So since then, Google, Microsoft, uh, Firefox have all made a big push to force shame people into always using HTTPS, so it's always secure. In fact, the default on browsers is now um, that um, it doesn't say it's secure. It, it actually says that if you're non-secure, it assumes that you should be using secure connection. Change to the computer. Um, some sites, some old sites won't have that still, so we're really promoting using the. Um, so there's there's a couple different SSIDs on campus. Most of them are probably using the UCI mobile access because it's easy to set up. Unfortunately, it's not encrypted. So we, the security team, really push to use EduRoam SSID because all of that is using encrypted Wi Fi, just like you probably have set up at your home. Um, it is like an extra step to set up, but I think it's worth it for, for getting that, that, that always encrypted um, safety. Then if you're somewhere else, I think a lot of you already know that the VPN is also an alternative if secure Wi-Fi is not available. And then the last thing I wanted to touch on is offline. So most of our digital life is online, but I did want to recognize the offline part of our digital life. And so it's keeping your devices secure, your laptops and all the other mobile devices. So um, the key part there is really encryption. Assume you're going to lose it. Assume it's going to get stolen out of you know, your backseat of your car or at the airport. Make sure um, you have some encryption turned on for the device. So BitLocker for Windows. So if you're a managed OIT customer on laptops, I believe it's rolled out. It's not in the process of rolling that out by default. Um, Mac has file vault, um, and then if you're not, for home users, if you don't have the, the version of Windows that has BitLocker for free, VeraCrypt is an open source free alternative to, to encrypt that. But also, always remember, I, we always have to mention this, stay patched, block malware, and have secure backups um, when you're online. Because assume you, know, uh, you may have insecure software and you could get compromised that way. So have, secure backups and, and stay patched. And then lastly, um, for sharing data with others, um, we, we have a, there's a number of solutions out there. The favorite I like to reference people to is uh, 7-zip. So your typical file folder or you know, zip archive tool. Um, but what it has that some of the other solutions it doesn't have is AES encryption. So that's the government standard uh, level of encryption. Um, so, so not only um, are you protecting the file with the password, again, which should be as strong as what we talked about earlier, but that password is using very strong encryption where some of the other tools um, don't, don't have that factor. And that's the, the key point there. So I, I, I like to always encrypt the data before I send it to, to someone else and then share the password with them. So that's the online and offline um, Digital life and any questions? Yes. Do you cross reference uh, users' password with recent reaches? Yes. So, the um, example you see out, out there at our, one of our booths is all of those passwords. And so, what we did is we, we 
you're able to run scripts to see which one of those are active or the, um, are valid to the current credentials, um, at least for your you saying that kind of stuff. So, so we do do that, and in those cases, we do reset um, the accounts, and so the, the latest one, I think it was 1,600? 1,600 accounts we had to have people reset the accounts. And then we always try to warn them, like, look, if you use this password anywhere else, especially if it is associated with that email address, change that as well. Is the the My Activity webpage does that include when you check you know, your email, email account, or is it only when you do uh, log into Web Office? Um, it does include uh, does it include Office Two Sixty. So it's, but tell them you have the first login because you don't have to type in the password each time. It's, oh, it's only when you have to type in the password. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's not each time, but, but you know, that, that will count because it'll only remember you for that, that session. So right. yeah, it'll, it includes um, Office 365 and your UCI to the local account mm -hmm. logins. Mm -hmm. So you recommend last pass and then UCI has that. So for users trying to make the jump, it might be intimidating going to a website and having to change the password and confirm it via email, et cetera. So does LastPass offer some sort of help on migrating to LastPass? Um, if you're using another tool, it does have some import capabilities. Um, if, if, it, if it's a site, it, 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 a well-known website, it does, I think, have some auto password changing capabilities. Um, so it, it does offer some of that. Yeah. LastPass has a lot of good resources on how to set that up. And I think um, we're going to be having some in-person training, development trainings, folks who are using LastPass as well coming up. Does LastPass uh, only work for UCI Net ID, or does it also work for HS credentials to help science? Um, so you'll log in with your, it, yeah, it'll work. It, so it'll, it'll use your UCI Net or campus credentials. Um, to, to register for an account. And then after that, you set your master password to be whatever you want. But it, it gets associated with your at UCI.edu email address. So is it being, is it limited to being used for like work accounts? Or would you be able to put personal stuff on that? You can put whatever you want in there. Um, uh, we, we recommend, you know, if, if, you, want, if you want to keep the, the live separate, you know. So LastPass, you can create a, a free account. It has less features, like the enterprise account, for example, allows you to share passwords with coworkers. So you, know, you have shared passwords, you know, for support contracts or social media or whatever your company does. Um, but and then also when you leave the university or you separate, um, you will periodically run a script to disassociate it. But um, our testing shown that it just reverts back to a free account. You don't lose the So you mentioned UCI's mobile access is unencrypted and other alternatives exist like VPN or Edgerome. Um, are there any mitigations in place for the unencrypted mobile access Wi-Fi since I'm sure so many students use it, especially in the food court or something? Do you have any mitigations for any sort of attacks? Um, well, we have a number of um, uh, launching at our, at our border or campus border for type you know, infections or talking to known bad sites. Um, but yeah, it's, it's more of a kind of communications campaign um, and you know, we, we're working with the, the networking team to put together a strategy of kind of you know, deciding that. So it's kind of cool. But yeah, the other thing with Edgerome that I forgot to mention is um, not only is this uh, encrypted, but it's used at other, it's a federation, so it's used at other campuses. Um, so if you go to another UC or Chapman or uh, another location around here, um, once you're registered with Edgerome on your computer, you get free Wi-Fi at all those other institutions you know, without any additional sign. Also, um, for the uh, UCI Net mobile access, on the page, you know, that you, when you go to it, it does mention that it's unencrypted, and it does mention that you should use the VPN if you are going to be using it for anything like where you have to log in. And um, we arrange it so that all of the mobile access IP addresses look like they're outside the VPN so you can use it for as 
normally on the cash gains, you can use cash to mobilize us for exactly that reason. Yeah, so, so we do communicate what, what, what we do want to improve and get more secure than our model. Yeah, it's, be it's, it's better than like I have it encrypted out of the box, which is what I think that's it on time, unless there's other questions. Last question. Thank you all for coming. Uh, do you want to close it out, or do you have to close out? I'm just a time guy. Oh, <laughs> just thank you for coming. Um, <laughs> your website, visit our booths. Um, a lot of people there to help us out. And I think we've got security top saying this for the rest of the day, so stick around. Thanks. And then fill out this survey here, and there's a booth or a little folder for the surveys right on that chair in the back with the door. Um, and I know there's a lot of stuff drumming while you're here.